This is the new XP Pen Artist 22E Pro. This is the new and improved pen display I reviewed last year. How does it stack up? Let's find out. This device was provided to me by the folks over at XP Pen for this review. The Artist 22E Pro is a pen display. What does that mean? It's an external monitor that you plug into your computer and you can draw on it using the included stylus. It comes with everything you need. A pen, make that two pens, cables, USB, a power block, a Reno, a pen holder, pen charger, you guessed it, a drawing glove. Just one glove, but only a selfish person would ask for more. I kind of wanted more. I tested out last year's version of this display and I really liked it. It was number two on my list of pen displays of this size. You can see my comparisons over on my website. I'm gonna link that down below. I did have some nitpicks with last year's model. It's like XP Pen watched my video and went about improving all of the little things that I talked about. And I'm impressed with what they've done here. What we have is a 21.5 inch screen. It looks pretty good. It's full HD, 1920 by 1080. The screen comes with a matte finish. Last year, you had to apply that matte finish yourself. This year, it just comes that way. Now the finish dulls the colors a little bit more than a glossy finish would, but I prefer to draw on it because it doesn't feel as slick. Your stylus isn't sliding around on the screen. It generally gives the stylus a really good feel when you're drawing. The nice thing about having a screen of this size is that it's big enough to prop up and use as your main monitor when you're not drawing. The one downside is that many modern laptops have a higher resolution screen on them. If you're used to looking at your phone or your tablet or a high resolution laptop screen, Screen, this might feel like a step down in quality. It's one of those trade-offs you're gonna make when you go for a more inexpensive display. We also got some shortcut keys, 16 of them, eight on either side. The case is identical to last year's version. You can also get this tablet without the hotkeys if you wanna save a little money. I really like having the shortcut keys myself because the display is so large, it takes up a large portion of my desk. My keyboard ends up having to be moved way off to the side. So being able to put some of those shortcuts like changing between an eraser or a brush or changing the size of my brush, being able to do that right there on the display without having to reach over or around to find my keyboard, really helpful. It also comes with an attached stand. It's adjustable, it's really solid. It's not gonna move on you once you lock it into place. The build quality in general is pretty much what I expected. Doesn't feel premium, doesn't feel high-end, but it doesn't feel cheap either like some Cintiq alternatives do. It's like XP Pen knows which corners to cut. Also comes with this battery powered stylus. This year's stylus has been upgraded to 8,128 levels of pressure sensitivity. The stylus lets you draw thicker or thinner lines or vary the opacity based on how much pressure you're applying to the pen. It also comes with a big gigantic black sarcophagus. Everybody told me not to open it, but I just had to know what was inside. Oh, it was just some extra nibs, eight of them. That makes sense. All right, so let's demo this pen. Here we are on Windows. I wanted to do a quick pen demo, show you how the stylus works uh, live right here. It works really well on Windows. If I start out and I just do a quick stroke, if I draw lightly and apply a little pressure, it draws a nice smooth line. This is with no brush smoothing on. If I'm just drawing at my normal pace, I'm getting a really smooth brush. Oftentimes you have to turn on stroke straightening in order to get this. I'm getting this without turning on any stroke straightening at all. Let's undo those lines. It does hold pressure really well if I wanna go a little bit darker and hold it around a circle or if I wanna go really light. That's something that I'm always looking for. Does it really well here on Windows? The other thing I'm always looking for is how it handles angled lines when I'm going smooth, slowly and it's handling them very well. Drawing by hand, it feels like I might be getting a little bit of wave, but it's, it's really not bad. Here, let me use a, a ruler to test it. Had to set my mic down for a second here. So uh, a slow line using the ruler, I'm getting a very straight stroke as I draw slowly on an angle. Uh, if I wanna draw straight vertical or horizontal lines, I get very good lines that way as well. The one thing that I don't think this does super well are super fast hatch lines. So if I draw really fast, here, let me get a smaller brush to show this. If I hatch really fast, you can see I'm getting this like check mark thing. They're called uh, fish hooks here at the back of them. Uh, these guys right here, that's no good. Uh, if I slow down those hatch lines just a little bit, you can see they're just fine. Uh, let me see how fast I can go. That's a decent speed for hatching. But if you wanna hatch super fast, you are gonna find some of those fish hooks. On Windows, that's really the only thing 
that I see that's going wrong with this pen. All right, this time um, on the Mac, we're doing the same pen test that we did before. We're just doing it with a different operating system, but the same settings, same program, same everything. And you're gonna see the pen is very similar between the two operating systems. Uh, overall, uh, my pressure variance looks really good. Uh, if I draw really, really lightly, I get a very light line, which is what I'm looking for. Uh, I'm still getting the fish hooks when I draw quickly. Let me reduce the pen size here a little bit so you can see what I'm talking about. And as I draw quickly, you see I'm getting the same uh, fish hooks going on at the end of those lines. And of course, just like on Windows, if I you know hatch a little bit slower, uh, and I slow it down a little bit, I can reduce that, but as soon as I speed it up a little bit, I'm gonna start to see those fish hooks again. Now, just like on Windows, I also am pretty impressed with uh, just the overall angled lines and things like that that I'm getting here. Uh, I do find that I'm getting a little bit of a wave, but it's very similar to Windows. I'm getting a, a very good slow diagonal line, which is something that I look for. Even without using a ruler, you can see that there's not a lot of jiggle, there's not, not a lot going on, and as you can see, my smoothing is turned all the way down. Uh, so this is without a line smoother on. If I knocked this up to, say, into the 20s, and I did the same thing, you're gonna get a really smooth line. In fact, here I'm seeing a little bit of a wave, but that could just be, you know, my hand moving. Let's do it with a ruler really quickly. I'm gonna actually turn the smoothing back off to do this. And let's see what kind of line we get even with the wooden ruler here. I have noticed in just my drawing that I do get a little bit of wave on the Mac that I'm not getting over on Windows. And I can actually start to see it just a tiny bit here and there. Overall, um, it is very good. Little bit of wave. But, but not a ton, definitely within acceptable parameters here on the Mac. So overall, pen test, very good on both Windows and the Mac. So I've gone through a lot of the pros. What are the cons? What are some of the drawbacks of this display? Some of the newer displays that are coming out have bonded screens. I might be using that term wrong, but basically they're reducing the amount of space between the glass and the screen itself. What this does is it greatly reduces the parallax on the pen. What is parallax? It is the amount of space between where your pen tip hits the screen and where your stylus appears underneath it. Now up to this point, this has been pretty common to have this sort of screen. So you're gonna find this on almost every other Wacom alternative out there but I think in the next year, we're gonna start to see more of these bonded screens starting to appear. Like I mentioned before, I've gotten used to looking at the higher density displays, my phone, my tablet, my laptop, all of them have more pixels and are crisper and clearer, easier to read on. I can't really see pixels even as I get up close. Even though this is an HD screen, you can definitely see pixels. And since I tend to hover right over my drawing tablets when I'm using them, it just looks fuzzier than what I'm used to looking at. And overall, I feel like these nitpicks are things that I totally expected and would totally expect in a $500 display like this one. It's just really what you wanna spend on if you're willing to spend less in order to get that slightly lower quality. So what's my final verdict? This is a really good display. When I first got it in, I thought this thing's just gonna be identical to last year's display, just with the better pen, but I've been really surprised at the little changes they've made to make this better. The initial activation is better, so it takes less pressure to register a line. That's really good news for light sketchers. The pressure, it flows smoother. Last year's model tended to come on a little strong on the high end of the pressure curve. And the only real downside I'm seeing in the pen itself are those fish hook lines I showed earlier. It's not something that affected my draw when I was just using it, but it's something that I definitely found when I'm testing and something you're gonna notice if you draw quickly or do quick hash lines. So where does this sit on my big list of displays? Right now, uh, it is number one on my list of 22 inch tablets. That's pretty good. It's beating out the Huion 22. Although I will say this, I just got the new version of that in last week. I haven't had the opportunity to use it too much. Gonna be using it a lot in the next week, hopefully getting out a review of that next week. So let's see if XP Pen can hang on and still be number one next week, I'll be posting all of those updates on my website. So if you, at any time you wanna see the updated list, go and check out that link. I guess that's all I've got for today. Thank you guys for watching, I really appreciate it. If I missed anything or if you have any questions that I didn't answer, let me know down below in the comment section. That's all I've got for today. Thank you guys for watching and I will see you in a couple of days.